Chancellor Mullen and distinguished platform guests, our distinguished faculty and staff of this prestigious university, especially our graduates and your parents. And I know they are proud of this day for a number of reasons. I wish first to thank you for the privilege of sharing this special occasion with you. I also am keenly aware of the fact that since I have sat through this particular event with a daughter and a son and three grandchildren, I am keenly aware as I reminisce with them from time to time about this event and ask them what they remembered about it. One thing that most of them didn't remember who was the commencement speaker. <laughs> they did remember shaking the hand of the chancellor and also being able to uh, think about what it is to be a graduate and where do they go from here. One did remember, however, my daughter, because her commencement speaker was Alex Haley, and she remembered that he took two hours to completely explain all he was going to do with his to-be movie roots. <laughs> now, I'm sure that I will suffer the same fate with this list of distinguished graduates. And even someday, not too long from now, they will tend to also not remember who the commencement speaker was. And instead of trying to do a long keynote, I first would like to urge the graduates to remember the definition of this day, commencement. That definition is a beginning and a start. And by its uh, very definition, the faculty and the staff here and the Board of Trustees really seriously believe that they have prepared you well for this beginning following this day. Now in the time allotted me, uh, which I recognize is the interlude between what you have heard so far and your coming across the stage, uh, I've learned as the granddaughter of a slave that I affectionately call Big Mama. And I tell you graduates, you would be surprised as you grow older how smart your parents are. And I also would like for you to follow some of the truisms that you probably have learned from them. I've learned over the years it's very dangerous to come early at a commencement exercise and go to the different programs. And what I heard yesterday and last night, these graduates should know. And Chancellor, I know that you and your faculty are keenly aware of not having individuals engaged in plagiarism, but I will take some exceptions to that. Because as I listened to you and your remarks yesterday, in which you affectionately referred to this family and the family on this dais, when you spoke and urged the graduates that they need to truly exploit the expectation of 
the expectations of what they have gotten from this faculty, that there would be numerous challenges and the expectations that the University of North Carolina in Asheville has of this distinguished group here is high, the bar is high. Following that, I listened to Mr. Washington address a small group about his really trying to reach the highest heights. The kinds of things that he suffered in terms of trying to be the person that his parents expected him to be, and that was to always be in pursuit of excellence. And I know that as we speak to these graduates about what he said about never letting up, and if you believed him, you would never let hard to do get in the way of something worth doing. I think it was important that you should know that message that came from him. And in the face of prejudice and conscious roadblocks, you too will see some of those. And what Mr. Washington said, I am a survivor. And what he also implied, and I will mix some of Big Mama's advice to me when I was trying to survive being the last of 13. He said, and I paraphrase it some, but you must write your own destiny because invariably you decide what you will become. And I think that last night as I listened to Tom Fazio and Muriel Siebert and Edward Villela, they spoke eloquently about their role and what it was involved to become the great successes and the distinguished people that they now are. And I believe they would have me to remind you of the fact that you have to believe in yourself in the beginning of this new life that's ahead of you. And you have to be constantly reminded what Big Mama said to me often, don't let the environment determine what you can become, into which environment you may go. The expectations that university has is that you will. But what you will also learn when you face those adversities and when you go to represent this university that education alone is not enough. The world is full of educated derelicts. Talent alone, and I'm sure I've heard and read through the program of your honors, but talent alone is not enough because there are many, many unsuccessful people with tremendous talent. And even as I looked through the program and saw your high honors, your bid for genius is even not enough because unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. But what is essential, I say to this distinguished class, you have to have a sense of that dedication and devotion to task and discipline that I heard the chancellor speak about yesterday. And you have to have a certain amount of pride as you face these obstacles. And you need to do every task you undertake as long as it takes, as many times as it takes, and as often as it takes for you to achieve the success that the university expects of you and your parents have paid for.
I, I still will paraphrase some of the things that I heard, but I want you to listen to just some of the words. For example, Big Mama and my brothers used to tell me, as if I didn't know because I had looked in that profound book, that the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. And so therefore, if you are going to really recognize and have others to do so, the talent that you have, remember that at least. And I was impressed with some of my association here at the university. And I want you to try to pattern yourself for the future after some of the individuals I know that you know about that have passed through the walls of this university. Ray Taylor, in the class of 1929 from Bumpkin Junior College, and you heard it earlier from the representative, he was instrumental in UNC Asheville's evolution from a four-year junior college and into a four-year educational institution. Mr. Taylor served as 30 years as an official at local, state, and federal levels and introduced eventually the legislation that North Carolina would provide state funding for junior colleges, which led to where you are now. Now, I think Taylor knew when he started that road, as you must know, that setting goals is an art. The trick is setting them at the right level, not too high, so that you can make excuses for not having reached them, and not too low, so that you can reach them without giving your very best effort, but also believing that your goals that you set as a result of this day's beginning is so important that it will override any uh, distractions that you may have. Let me tell you something about Wilma Dykeman in the class of 1938. It's another inspiration for you. A descendant of some of the earliest European inhabitants in western North Carolina and eastern Tennessee region, gave credence to what I thought Big Mama tried to get me to understand that the environment should not determine what you must become. And Wilma Dykeman has authored 18 books, but has also been a lifelong social activist on the issues of race and women's rights and education and the environment. And you think for one moment she did not face obstacles? Of course she did. Do you think for one moment that she did not believe that her preparation was so essential that she could not do less than be in constant pursuit of excellence? And at this university convinced her that obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off your goals. Taylor and Dykeman, like you, and your own Dr. D. James in the class of 73, realize that after commencement, after today, after this beginning, after the use of your talent, and those of you with great talent, as I see in the program by the honors you've achieved, work will improve them. And the others of you, like me and others of just moderate ability, work will tend to supply your insufficiencies. So, then you must believe in that definition in the dictionary. 
that the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. Uh, Dr. James even believed that going afar may be helpful sometimes. And so she believed that so much that she went down to South Carolina. <laughs> but only because she thought she should broaden herself and know what people who are less fortunate go through. <laughs> and she went to South Carolina uh, and also to Clemson, which was a change, <laughs> to get a master's and a doctorate degrees. And with these broadened horizons, Dr. James received the Board of Governors Teaching Award for Excellence. You too can. I'd like to also say that your current Vice Chancellor of Administration and Finance, Wayne Devitt, he was from the class of 1975. And so don't let him tell you that he's any younger. But he sharpened his skills to better serve his alma mater by working as a chief of staff for former North Carolina Governor James Hunt. And the Honorable Gray Thompson of the class of 1988 worked assiduously for 14 years to prepare himself after this beginning at UNC Asheville and now serves as chairman of the state's appropriation committee. And both Devin and Thompson realized after their commencement that success is a journey, not a destination. Both realized, as, as the current class must, that whatever goal you set, you must feel that until you have put supreme effort and dedication in an important event in your life, you'll never be truly satisfied. And following this commencement, this beginning of the rest of your life, as your distinguished alumni have done, that success is indeed a journey, not a destination. Now, you've heard that song, I'm sure, that you've heard many times on television, my mama done told me, well, I think here it's essential for you to have some confidence in what the Chancellor has meant in his changes here, what the Board of Governors have tried to make it comfortable for you, what they have survived in all of the changes in order to get you to the point that you are willing to meet obstacles and change. And I quote Langston Hughes, the great writer, who said, climbing the success stairs, they are not crystal stairs. And you can't make excuses for what things don't come your way. For excuses are the expression of the untalented. The revelation of pure excellence comes from meeting the task. Also, like to say to the graduates about these honors that you have received and what happens when you leave this day, this beginning, this start. You must accept the principle that your individual involvement in whatever faces the community where you go, the school, the church, or wherever, you must become involved because others may not have the talent nor the passion that you have. And remember, if you think it doesn't mean that you can make a difference, Thomas Jefferson and Quincy Adams were elected president by the Electoral College by one vote. The states of Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, Tennessee, received statehood by one vote of the Electoral College. 
How many things you go through now have been decided for you by the Supreme Court, by one vote? And when someone asked Walter Cronkite once, who is the icon of these individuals that call themselves the anchors of television, what is it that you attribute to the success that you now enjoy? And he could have listed a dozen things or more, but his answer was very simple. One teacher has made that difference. And so I think that you uh, really ought to do that and owe it to yourself to say that I believe enough in myself to follow another one of Big Mama's axioms that there are two ways to deal with difficulties. You either change the difficulties, you alter the difficulties, or you alter yourself to meet the difficulties. And I also think you ought to know that it doesn't always come easy. It is always formidable to you in terms of your road to success. But when you think about that, think about Rembrandt. He was painting masterpieces when people thought he was a failure. And I looked at the lighting last night and I was further reminded of it this morning when all the lights at Grove Park went out. How blessed we are that Edison, after a thousand failures, finally discovered the light bulb. It will not be easy. And another thing that I heard often, and I got the implication and listened to Washington and listened to your chancellor and listened to my fellow honorees here, don't worry about a little spilled milk as long as you don't lose the cow. <laughs> I want you to take heed, because of this preparation, to another great philosopher, because we've been doing a lot of discussion about the Yankees, and he was a great catcher uh, for the New York Yankees, Yogi Berra. And one of his great philosophical statements for those people who are prepared is when you get to the fork of the road, take it. <laughs> and so I will not feel badly if you don't remember my participation with you on this very special day. I'd just like to leave with you another couple of axioms that I'm sure your faculty has said to you in different ways, and Big Mama has made it clear to me as she gave me those eyes which could speak volumes. The Chisholm Law of Human Interaction. I like that demonstration. <laughs> the Chisholm's Law of Human Interaction says that any time things appear to be getting better, uh, you overlook something. And also check out the rule of accuracy that when working toward the solution of a problem, it helps if you have the answer. And I think in this constant pursuit, I leave you with what I believe is really my feeling about what this university does to prepare its graduates. And I think that all of you can be what we call possibilitarians. That no matter how hard things seem after you leave this day, uh, how difficult they are or seem to be, always raise your sights to see the possibilities. Raise your sights because the possibilities are always there. And I close with these reminders, what life is as you go from this new day. Life is what you live each day. Life is the challenge and it will be, so meet it. Life is the gift, much of which you've received from this university, accept it. 
Life is an adventure, dare it. But life is a duty, performing it. Life is an opportunity, take it. But life is a journey, complete it. Life is a promise, fulfill it. Life is a goal, achieve it. But sometimes life is a puzzle, solve it. And I hope that you will, in your work after this commencement, this beginning, this day, live every day as if you think it will be your last, and one of the days you'll be right. Thank you very much. <laughs>